Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy Vinny Dangerous back again on a beautiful afternoon to give y'all another beat breakdown. This time is for my track featuring St. Pat from Dream Till It's Over called Got Me Effed Up. You know, I got to censor myself the first 30 seconds or so on YouTube. And yeah, I'm going to take y'all into this session and show y'all how this beat was made. So let's get into it. All right, so to be honest, I have not opened this session in a while. Um, usually when I'm done, I'm done. Uh, or I'll just continue to tweak and tweak and tweak. But, and it was a feeling I had after I put the song out. Full disclaimer, this is not really one of my favorite mixes. And even after the song came out, I was like, damn, there's certain things here and there I would have changed. But nevertheless, still one of my favorite tracks. Shout out to my boy St. Pat for dropping a verse on this song, helping make it complete. And, you know, being one of the standout, more aggressive tracks on Dream Till It's Over. And so I remember when I made this one, you know, I'm a big Griselda fan. Shout out to Griselda. Really a big fan of Conway, Benny the Butcher, uh, West Side Gun. Just really the whole crew. They really don't go wrong with their releases, in my opinion. And I really wanted to make, you know, something kind of in the style of them. You know, not really biting like Conductor and the other producers they work with, but just, you know, something inspired by their sound. And I really wanted a more boom bapish sound for a couple of tracks just because I wanted to, you know, pay tribute to, you know, a, a, like a bygone era, so to speak. And that was kind of the inspiration behind this. And it's a very simple track when I go back and look at it. Like outside of the main uh, harp at the beginning of the track, uh, there's a couple of uh, little box sounds, there's a bass, and then everything else is drums and feels for the most part. And I think it's pretty dope. I was watching something with Manny Fresh. Uh, I think he was doing an interview. He was talking about uh, you know tracks, like some of his legendary tracks from back in the day. And he was talking about how he really doesn't use a lot of sounds in his production. Like he might use, you know, eight or nine sounds in one track. But, you know, knowing his production and knowing how, you know, legendary his stuff is, it just goes to show that you could do a lot with very little. You know, a less is more approach can really take you a long way. You don't have to just pile it with like 15, 16 layers or something. And that's kind of how I feel about this track. So this one probably won't even take that long to go over, but I'll start off with the main melody that you hear like throughout the whole track is this harp sound right here. Really love this, really um, really like the, the texture of it. Like it sounds like very realistic, at least, you know, compared to a lot of other harp uh, sounds that I've come across. And it's a very simple, pattern actually something similar to something i saw with uh a busy words beats video i don't even think it was on youtube i think it was on um a reel on instagram and i thought it was really dope and i kind of you know he was using a harp sound as well and i just ended up uh you know getting inspired by that so i'm gonna play the i'm gonna play the harp by itself and then I'm gonna play it with all of the effects and I'm gonna show you like kind of my thought process going into it. All right, so that's what it off, on. All right, so yeah, big difference, you could tell. Um, so what I did was I started off by cutting the lows, cutting the highs. Um, it sounded really dope. I came back actually after, you know, applying the other effects because I didn't like the harshness that some of the effects was giving the harp sound. So I was really just cutting out the lows and just cut out the highs. Didn't really do too much else uh, outside of those two moves with the EQ. Then I played this Cymatics Origin and just used the Origin preset. And it's a really dope, this might be one of my favorite or it might be my favorite lo-fi plugin to use on on just individual sounds i don't really use it on um like buses or full mix but i think on individual sounds you could get real creative with this only thing i don't like about this plugin and if cymatics is watching this 
and I, it's a pretty common thing for a lot of lo-fi plugins so i'm not you know just saying that it's an issue with this one in particular but this is the one i use the most that's why i'm pointing this one out but it has this weird thing where depending on the sound that you pick like one of these other uh i think it's like vinyl and maybe some of the other cassettes where you hear the noise even when the plugin is not playing and sometimes when i export it'll have this long tail of you know static noise or cassette noise that you know it could be a little irritating to deal with once you know you're ready to you know export it you have to do some extra editing not a big deal but it just you know it could be a little annoying from time to time but i thought it just kind of gives it that vintage sound that i really enjoyed with this track you know the whole key was trying to make everything sound you know old school vintage and to really like take you back to that 90s 80s kind of sound so after that uh, i use this flux mini with the pancake rise preset didn't change anything on this one either i was just actually playing around with different plugins just to kind of see like what else can i add to this to kind of you know give it a different kind of sound and i thought this was dope just the you know glitchy stutter that you hear at the end of the pattern comes from this and i thought it it really sounded nice like when i threw it on there so it was just kind of like playing around and i got it now to give it that really distorted glitchy sound is this bit crusher i think it's really dope especially for a free plugin i don't use it as much i have other ones that i kind of lean on to it's because this one could be very aggressive and you have to really uh, watch it or it'll completely destroy the sound. So you can see right here in the corner, I used only 25% mix on this one to get it to sound exactly how I wanted it to sound without it like hurting my ears or just completely destroying the harp sound. Unless I put halftime, and this is where I was talking about before, like the less is more approach, because it's really the main instrument that's going through the whole thing, but I use these little halftime sections right here to kind of help um, break it up a little bit to where I didn't have to throw in a different instrument. Instead, I just use this effect in a, in a you know somewhat creative way. I wouldn't call it that creative, but it's a, you know it's a simple but effective method to kind of keep the beat interesting. So I'm gonna play a little bit of it. I meant to play it in the beginning, but um, I'll play this part where it goes into the halftime portion. You know what I'm saying? It could, it just, especially in the context of the track, it definitely feels like completely different, and it helps kind of, uh, you know, keep the keep the beat going. Like I said, keeping it from sounding, you know, too repetitive, too monotonous, and I, I think it just works for this track. And after this, really, the main thing I guess to talk about is the drums, because that's like the majority of the track. So, and yeah, it's a pretty simple pattern. Um, yeah, I'll just play this part right here. Saying just something simple. Um, added a lot of swing. You can see it right here in this little corner right here. Uh, add a lot of swing to give it that, you know, more you know, off kilter groove. And I don't do a lot of like individual instrument mixing, uh, especially back then. I probably do a lot more of it now, but it, I definitely didn't do it then. I do most of my uh, mixing on the bus. Just as, for the most part, you'll just see like individual like cleanup EQs and stuff like that to help create space between them. But every most of the magic happens on the bus. So use this SSL style compressor. 
uh, use the very heavy ratio and then just play with the mix knob till I got it to the right sound. Use this EQ curve. Uh, it's really like my main go-to with most of my drums. I just maybe tweak here and there depending on taste. Uh, Diablo Light to give it a little bit more punch and to clip it a little bit. Use this uh, light, fruity, fast distortion just to kind of give it a little bit more grit and give it a little bit more presence in the mix when the other instruments come in. And then I just use this fruity reverb directly on the bus. Um, to keep it from sounding muddy i only have it going on the mid channel and cut out the high end and then cut out the low just to keep it keep the reverb centered and not you know mess up the low end and stuff so here is everything turned off oh and then i use this fruity meter uh now I just use my ears, but at that time I think I was like really conscious about leveling and stuff like that. So I used the meter to make sure that it was a good balance. I, I mix a lot in my headphones because especially when I made this track because my son was so young. So I needed to, you know, not disturb him with my monitor. So I would use my headphones a lot. And so I would use the meters to kind of help, you know, guide me since my ears didn't have the studio monitors to rely on but now I'm, I'm much better with just using my ears so that's why that dv meter is on right there so here's the drums without the mix bus processing nice but could be used a little bit more energy Yeah, so you see, it, it gives it a little bit more, you know, just life, in my opinion. So, then I just have this string. I'm going to go through this pretty fast, because literally it's just playing one note. One. One note pan, playing all the way through. Uh, with this one, again, use Cymatic to Origin, this time with the vinyl preset. But, again, that noise could be a lot, so I turn the vinyl off on this uh, cut out a lot of the a lot of the lows all of the highs I just wanted to keep it centered and then I use this uh, pre 73 I this this is gonna pop up in pretty much every video I do like this whether it's on vocals or on beats because it's just my go-to and with this one I turned the input gain all the way up to just give it like that uh, you know tube saturation to just kind of you know that kind of Put a little bit more heat on it and then i cut out a lot of lows i felt like there was still a lot of low you know frequencies that were you know bright and harsh to the ears so i cut out a lot until it just dulled it a little bit and then you know another thing that kind of helps give it that old sound this particular sound was just so bright so i had to cut out a lot but so you probably won't have to do it as much but this just kind of helped keep it from you know, just sounding too bright and too harsh to the ears. I use this Monster Vox. You probably hear that in the track a lot. You know, again, really simple, playing the same note over and over again. Uh, only thing I did on this, I used this gentle vocal child preset on Flux Mini. And it just kind of helps it. You know, it just gives it like this little extra character to it, I guess. That's what it sounds like with it off. On. You know, something simple. Um, and then it's like these what chants, you know, this telephone, uh, EQ preset, this pancake sound, keep it, you know, going back and forth. Like going, it's, right, left, right, left ear. And then this reverb to just give it some ambience. You know, nothing really to it, really simple. Uh, and I guess the last couple of things is I got this bass. Use the like stock contact bass. And I just thought it was perfect. Like it gives me the vibe, like Tribe Called Quest, uh, De La Soul, 
you know that like native tongues era like diggable planets that's another uh group that comes to mind and it comes with its own noise which i thought was really dope this thing is like for kind of boom bap sounds like i think this stock sound is like really underrated i think it's really dope um uh, to give you know to give you that feel uh and i just did a, like a couple little patterns to kind of help it from staying you know repetitive and the next thing are just kind of like these little perks uh i use this you know at the intro just give it that you know let, let you know that what kind of error i'm going for because it reminded me of uh the intro to or the uh like the tom fields I, I don't think it's just an intro but i think about the intro to uh things done change by uh biggie and on and on the ready to die album. like i heard this and that's where it immediately took me and i thought oh yeah this is perfect uh i think i got this from curtis king shout out to curtis king uh he just made this pack of free tom fills and i was like yo this is perfect like this particular one was perfect for this song um oh and then this final drum pattern like with this one i remember uh recording the beat like as is like with this uh first part right here and I was thinking it just needed something else and i recorded my hook so i could send it to saint pat so i can hear you know his part and then when i got his verse back yeah you know, i listened to it and i was just like yo we need it just needs something and then i was just scouring the internet for uh these drum loops and i came across this one and I think I accidentally, you know, chopped this in half. So instead of playing the full like halftime rhythm, it did this. And then cutting it out, and it still kind of like gives it that little static feel. Like it kind of feels almost like, like, I don't know, just it kind of puts you in like this different kind of mood before the drum hits. And then I put this uh, drum loop here. Just completely different vibe, different kind of energy, but it's still along the lines of like what this song was going for. I just thought, okay, cool. This is like the nice little beat switch up. Really give you that uh, feeling like, oh, okay, we're going into, you know, a different mode here. Like, you know, I had one flow in the beginning, you know, St. Pat followed that, and then hit you with like a whole different like level of, you know, lyricism. And I thought, I thought this was perfect. So I found that drum loop, just slapped it on, didn't really cut it up. The only thing that I did different was use this Lifeline console and I used this uh, lo-fi percussion preset. And I talked about this, I think on the vocal mix review. I don't know if I talked about it on uh, any of the other beat breakdowns, but I absolutely love this thing. And I love it because it is I like, you know, channel strips like this in general, just because I like being able to just do everything at one spot. Same reason why I like drum plugins is just the idea of instead of taking a bunch of different plugins, even if they're from like the same developer, they're not necessarily meant to go together, if that makes sense. Whereas like something like this, where all of the processes are within one VST, like it, they all kind of sound a little bit more consistent, if that makes sense. So that's why I really like this thing. And another example, and it, like, like I said, this is early on. So I'm really just, just slapping presets on here and maybe I'll make a tweak here and there. I'm not that confident yet. So it's another example of, uh, you know, you just slapping a preset on it and it just worked. The only thing I might have done was change up this compressor a little bit and switch this from dark to warm. And I just thought that worked better for what I was going for. So here is, you know what, let me pull this up. So this is what it sounds like with it off.
And this is what it sounds like on. So I give it like an older feel. Just really like gives it that driving feel. And yeah, and this is what it sounds like with, you know, on the track, like leading into that third verse. You know, like I said, very simple, straightforward beat. You know, I took a less is more approach, and I think it came out great. Not my favorite mix, like I said, and there are things that I would have changed. Actually, there's some stuff that I probably did go back and change, but I'm not gonna, you know, re-record the song and put it back out. I just don't feel like that's necessary. The song lives on as is. And yeah, you know, that was the beat breakdown for Got Me Fucked Up featuring St. Pat from my Dream Till It's Over album. If you want to hear the song in its entirety, as well as 12 other dope tracks with a bonus, make sure y'all check that out on Bandcamp or on my website, www.vinnydangerous.com. Like I said before, I completely took my stuff off of streaming. Long story short, they stealing from artists, so I'm not rocking with them. But if you want to see more videos like this, if you, you know, you know, let me know what you think. You know, did you get anything out of this? You know, or, you know, just let me know what you want to do, what you what song you want me to do next after you go back and listen to Dream Till It's Over if you haven't already. And yeah, man, I really appreciate you watching the video if you made it this far. And until next time, it's your boy Vinny Dangerous once again. This has been the Beat Breakdown. Much love.